Real quick, I want to show you some cool things about Peter Gabriel's Salisbury Hill. Over here on the right is his original. Over here on the left is my arrangement of it to convey my arrangement to the people I'm playing music with rather than re-record my version, make a whole demo where I play bad versions of drums and bass. All I did was I took Peter Gabriel's version and I made the changes to it using Ableton. So I just opened up this audio file. I said, okay, well, I don't want to sing it in B. I want to sing it in A. So I hit down twice. And now you can hear that the pitch of that has changed. The other thing that I wanted to change about it is the form. His is a little bit unusual. The verses are all the same length. The choruses are all the same length. But he plays this intro or reintro part right here, this riff. He plays it twice in between chorus one and verse two. Then he plays it four times in between chorus two and verse three. And then he does a long fade out with some cool, interesting sounds in there. Playing this live, we're not going to do a live fade out. So I took all these things that he was doing here. And then I just cut and pasted and I used the duplicate feature with Ableton. Um, there's a whole host of things that you expect, like cut and copy and paste. They work exactly like you think they do. Uh, and then there's Command D allows you to duplicate sections. If you hold down Shift when you're doing any one of those things, you can also delete or add time. So you could paste something, but paste it in the middle of two audio clips, and it will just make the space for that new section to go. It's really handy. Just check out the manual. This is not really a video about how to use Ableton. We're kind of looking at this song, and so I wanted to point out a couple of things. Notably, this song is in 7-4. Almost this entire song is in 7-4. So if you were counting along to it, you would be um, counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. Very unusual. It's such a great song, though, that when you're listening to it, it doesn't sound like someone's doing a bunch of math equations behind you. It just sounds like really good music. I love that sort of thing when there's something... Um, unexpected under the hood but it's not advertising itself so that when you're listening to it you're just like hey this is good music i want to listen to it on that note something really interesting that happens when you're counting in seven you can think of it as groups of three and four or groups of four and three in this song it has both so this first part is one two three one two three four one two three one two three four one two three four one two three one two three four and then it switches it goes from that three plus four to four plus three check it out one two three four one two three one two three four one two three brilliant so so cool in the chorus it turns itself around a little bit right here it's doing two three four one two three it straightens out one Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. That's just such a crazy, crazy thing. Uh, and this is such a good song to learn to sort of get used to counting unusual groups. It really helps you uh, develop that stuff. Anyway, that's about all I got on this one. If you want to learn my version of it, I'm happy to make a tutorial for you, but I suspect you actually want to learn the version that's on the record. And for that, I would watch the Shut Up and Play guitar uh, tutorial video for that. It's great. Uh, it's very clear. And Steve Hunter, the man who played on the record himself, even commented on there, like that's the top pinned comment saying, this is the best tutorial I've seen on this. So if you're looking to play the original version, yeah, go check out that one. If you wanted to learn my version, just leave a comment. I'm happy to make a tutorial for it. And if you want to see more stuff like this where we break down songs using Ableton and we create charts and look at what the, all those things mean, then you should check out the newsletter. I'll link that down below. Thanks. Have a good one.